Hey, welcome back and in this video I'm gonna talk to you about UX portfolios. Now if you've seen my other video of how, how to choose the specific portfolio platform, probably notice that I mentioned case studies. And in this second part of UX portfolio series, I want to talk to you about how to make a powerful case study and what are the key elements then you know when you want to describe the work you're actually making. This is gonna apply to you even if you don't really have any type of case studies or all your work is basically you know just a start or maybe not a real client, just a passion project. It doesn't really matter. You can apply the same principles to any case study to define it from A to Z and then make it powerful. I'm gonna actually also show you a couple of examples and I'm gonna show you my own portfolio which has only the passion projects because I have a lot of NDA restrictions from my professional work but that's totally fine it doesn't matter as long as you keep the structure right and tell a story which is the most important bit any recruitment agent or peer designers or whoever you want to impress with that portfolio is gonna buy into it number one thing important in portfolio is a story now if you would go for my portfolio and let's pick one case, let's say the Endurance Buddy app, which was a passion project, my own entrepreneurial effort, which I used as just general experience design study, you're gonna see that I walk users through different snapshots. You're gonna see that I introduce the users, say hiring managers or design peers or whoever, other professionals with big impactful imagery. I think that's quite important. UX design portfolio cases don't have to be pretty flashy and you know, they just have to look good enough to tell the story. So I use a lot of different photos, some imagery, most of the material I put in my portfolios, in my cases, pure download from actual work. And if you, if you can see, I have a lot of, let's say a prototype which I use to validate the user input. I have a snapshots of the actual user testing sessions and I have a lot of text which I just wrote really quickly and passed by my editor and we just put it all together. It took literally a day to put this case study. Now, the story here, which I want to get back to the main point, is that I'm just telling from A to Z of exactly what was the user issue or let's say a business issue and how I solved it. So I, I go through like, I have three different elements here. I have an introduction, I have a follow-up development of the story, what challenges I faced, and in the end, I tell the conclusion. Now, if we go into small details, which is number two, after you know you nail your story and you know exactly what story you wanna tell, and you know who your target audience is, you need to tailor the specifics. Now, every case study have to have at least three big parts. One is a challenge. Next one is the things you did or the solution or let's say the uh, or, or let's say the process you followed and free the outcomes now in the challenge it could be that you list the business problem as well as maybe you know something what users face so you can combine the two because you as UX designer you're just basically taking business requirements you are taking the user needs which you discovered in your discovery and you combine them to you ideate and you come up with a product which answers goals from business but also the user needs so it works for both parties so in your challenge you can start with just describing the business problem and then you can also highlight exactly what users feel try to put your reader your audience in the shoes of your user i like to use anecdotal evidence some quotes maybe some general statements which would paint the picture again add imagery you know and once you're done with describing a challenge you can also list exactly how you approach that challenge so what methodology you used what are the highlights of it what this team setup was who you were in that team setup were you a ux manager were you a hands-on designer were you a ui designer primarily or were you you know responsible for some design system or asset management it doesn't really matter but you need to state exactly what you did as a person if it's a passion project try to think of your target audience again and what you want to achieve if you want to find a job as a junior designer, you should actually state that you were hands-on researcher, designer, user testing, person, facilitator, yada, yada, yada. All those roles which you actually completed, but what's the most relevant 
for your goal. And then, you know, we go into, into the weeds of it. You can also show snapshots of different things, maybe wireframes, maybe user journey, sitemaps, research downloads from discovery, let's say user testing downloads, mockups, share prototypes, so it could be just snapshots, it could be actually clickable things, it's just use exactly what you captured using your project, because in some projects you might just jump directly into high fidelity prototypes, so just do that, don't fake it, just use what you had and just show it, try to think from your audience feed and exactly like what they are looking for. Are we looking for, you know, just flashy imagery? I don't think so, because flashy imagery just shows the end product. What we want to know is nitty gritty in the weeds details. So, so try to share that. And in my case, let's say, I'm trying to just show here and there a couple of snapshots. As you can see, I have one statement for, let's say, wireframes, another statement for user journey, some mind mapping. I'm just kind of like jumping from thing to thing. Again, trying to make a visual impact and visual story. What's the biggest bit and the biggest winner for any case study is the outcomes. If it's a passion project or if it's a client project, you sometimes might not get all the metrics and specific bits in place or something to report back as a result, then I would recommend for you to try to list how your users reacted to it. What is the bigger impact of a product or, or a service you just implemented? Is it that it's a culture change? Is it that the, it's estimated to reduce the costs for business, let's say, or raise the revenue or something like that? Just think of the actual results. It could be that you don't have the tangibles yet. If you have, list every, everything tangible. In some of my cases, I say, hey, the mobile retention rates increased by 60% or it doubled or something like that. It's really powerful. But if you don't have that, list what's an estimated output in the end and just have that like an outcome. So the person who reads your case study knows exactly, you know, this thing, what you did is a success or is a failure. And you know, sometimes it's good to list that it's a failure. And I did so in my past in my case studies, because just be honest exactly what's an outcome because nobody's perfect. So maybe what you come up with is actually doesn't stick with the users. So reframe it and say, but in the next iteration, we plan to do X, Y, Z because users just didn't pick up and didn't like it. And I have that in, you know, multiple of my case studies. And that's totally fine because we're all human, we make mistakes. I hope this was useful and you know how to make a case study. Think about your audience, what story you want to tell, what's your goal with that case study and what are the steps you took? Challenge, approach and outcome. Simple as that. And there is no format which is put in place. If you want to copy paste what I did, feel free to do so because that's just one way to represent the story. Where maybe you just need to make a video about your case and talk about it. So please do that and then embed your video in your portfolio. I hope this was useful. If so, give a like, subscribe to this channel, leave a comment down below if you have any specific questions. And as usual, I'll see you next time.